How's it going guys? My name is Patrick Thompson. Today we're going to talk a little bit about psychological autopsies. So what exactly is a psychological autopsy? In essence and in functionality, it is exactly the same as the usual physical autopsy that most of us are familiar with. Um, in this physical autopsy, there is a dissection and examination of the body of the deceased and in an attempt to figure out exactly what it was that killed the individual. Uh, psychological autopsies are still an attempt to determine the cause of death. However, it's done through a mental and psychological dissection rather than a physical one. This is due to the fact that psychological autopsies are brought into play when investigators are faced with an equivocal death. Now, when I say equivocal, what I mean is the cause of death is still um, unclear to the investigators. So the question has been raised, did this guy kill himself or was it an accident? Did he throw himself off the bridge or did he trip and fall? Um, and so to answer that question, investigators come up with these psychological autopsies, um, a look into the history and mental factors of the individual in an attempt to determine, one, if this individual has the capacity to kill himself, if he shows the, the patterns and risk factors that others who have committed suicide have, and two, if he has that capacity, if he did in fact kill himself. And so as, as we look through these histories, investigators keep a keen eye open for um, physical disturbances or disorders because, as we know, according to, this is the uh, library, National Library of Medicine, 90% of suicides are accompanied by a comorbid mental disorder. So remaining sensitive to that, investigators keep three main goals in mind. Um, one is to uncover the mental state of the individual at the time of their death. Um, they want to understand the circumstances surrounding and leading up to the individual's death. And they want to ultimately determine if it was, in fact, suicide. Uh, so to do this, what investigators do is uh, they line up structured interviews with uh, friends family, uh, co-workers, and uh, they ask about the individual's history, about relationship histories, about family histories, um, they ask about his, his daily routine, what, what he did every day, um, if they had noticed any even minor changes in his, his behavior or demeanor. Any scrap of information the investigators can get, they'll take, because it the family may not even blink twice about it, but the investigators may pick up, may be able to pick up on some subtle nuance or, or pattern that may help them better understand the mental status of this individual upon his death. So on top of the interviews, um, they will also go for any um, type of relevant record available, any type of history, medical history, uh, psychiatric history, uh, phone records, um, they can see who he was talking to and find out from that person what they were talking about, um, personal writings like diaries and journals, um, letters back and forth to loved ones, Facebook posts, Twitter posts, um, drawings, any kind of documentation that gives a deeper look inside the uh, mind of the individual. Um, and on top of that, they have the information they can take in from the scene of the death itself. And so what they do with all this information is um, they get this synthesized report that they can look over and analyze, and investigators as well as, well as uh, mental health official, officials um, look at it and Look for risk factors, look for patterns and nuances that are common among candidates for suicide. 
<clears throat> and so um, as they do this, they, they're keeping a, um, a special lookout for um, risk factors such as drug abuse or um, abusive family histories or mental disorders that could um, lead one to commit suicide. Um, and so as uh, James Knoll tells us in his article, The Psychological Autopsy, um, there are a couple distinct key goals that these investigators have in mind as they're going through. Um, the one is to hone in on uh, specific behavior patterns, um, get get a better feel for this individual's adaptability, his um, how he responds to stress, uh, just his typical everyday behavioral pattern and how it may have changed prior to his death and what may have caused those changes. Um, they want to look for the presence or absence of mental illness, illness um, the presence or ab abs absence of uh, motives to possibly commit suicide, maybe just lost a job, uh, took a breakup way too hard, uh, anything. Um, they also want to look for suicidal intent. They want to determine any suicide risk factors that may have been present and ultimately decide whether or not this individual is a likely candidate for suicide. Now, aside from solely answering the question, did he kill himself? Psychological autopsies do serve several other functions. Um, they can be used in insurance claims, in um, malpractice claims, uh, civil and criminal cases. Um, an example of a criminal case would be uh, Florida 1989, uh, Jackson versus the state of Florida. Um, and a, a psychological autopsy was actually successfully used to prove that a, um, a mother who had been abusing her daughter had pushed her daughter to commit suicide through that abuse. And so um, that is the most notable uh, case that I can think of that I found at least um, where a psychological autopsy came and played such a major role. Um, civil cases, we see psychological autopsies really come into play more for um, life insurance claims. Uh, insurance companies uh, won't pay out the policy if the individual died at his own hand. So, um, we will see a lot of investigation into that, into trying to determine whether or not the deceased, the beneficiaries of the deceased, get the benefits that the policy would um, guarantee had it not been suicide. And so, um, well, ultimately, these psychological autopsies are a look into the mind of, this, of the deceased. They are an attempt to answer questions that we can no longer ask because, well, the individual is no longer with us. Um, so by synthesizing all these um, discourses with informants and records and documents that we have, the, uh, the investigators are able to get a better understanding of the circumstances surrounding the death and hopefully determine whether or not the individual did in fact commit suicide. Now, it may not be a perfect science, it may not be a well-oiled machine in terms of procedure-wise, it varies from department to department, but one thing is undeniable and that it is a top-notch help in assisting in the classification um, and conclusion of questions left open by equivocal deaths and um, it's 
that's about all I got for you guys. Thank you very much.